Are we ready to carve? Yeah. Let's get carving. Uh, yeah, I'm Gemini from Columbus, Ohio. Hi. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Twitter handle Darlene underscore thief. I do have a two part. Oh, um, watch out. Question. Uh, first one's yes or no. The other one could be a little more in depth. It's okay. Just, if you're going to ever go back to writing. Writing, it comes the least naturally, and it's the it's scariest for some reason. I guess because I'm used to working visually, you can see when something's like wonky. But with writing, by the time you get anything together, it's like I can't even. Yeah. And I'm too scared to show it. Yeah. So I um, I have been I kind of prefer honestly being on this more of the coming up with story thing. I'm not great with the dialogue so much. Like I do need a lot of help, and actually Jeff did help me a lot with some of the punchlines early on with the comic. I'm not really doing a lot of work here. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna be doing a comic project. Soon with Chelsea Harfouche, and she's in the booth right now. She has to babysit it, um, otherwise she'd be <laughs> yes. here. Um, so we're kind of working on a collaboration, and definitely interested. In, I really want to do comics still, but I would prefer to come at it from the art, art side of it, and maybe even and maybe creative director, just making sure things get done. But um, would rather work with a writer that's just like a natural, so I can kind of do the the fun stuff. Not the writing's not fun, but the less painful and like yeah, excruciating. Yeah. Okay, pretty hard gonna, to find a natural writer. And then you <laughs> yeah. said that there yeah. was a second part. Yeah, just oh, if yeah. you were gonna do something like ice sculpture, like just even just to try. Ooh. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna not look at your face, but I'm gonna answer your question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, in February, I have an opportunity. Most likely, it hasn't totally been solidified yet, but I might be doing a <laughs> ice carving show in Canada. Never ice carved before. Wow. And uh, get the, getting a lesson from Chris Foltz, who's the sort of phenom chef slash ice carver slash wood carver. He wins a lot of competitions. He's got this really crazy style where he uh, does a lot of additive. So he'll cut the thing into pieces, almost like a sewing pattern, like a big log into like multiple pieces, and then re-composite like, it together. A lot of the carvers are a little more old school and try to do like a single, just a carving out of a single log and don't yeah. think about what they can do with it. So uh, be really interested, honestly, I'd like to just get tickets right about wood carving, but uh, he's willing to give me a ch ice lesson. So in February, I'm going to be going up to Canada, most likely, to get this ice lesson and also have to carve for like a week in the freezing cold. So, what is your name and question? Um, I was just wondering from... Oh, right. It so, calls up there. There you go. Oh, you're yeah. going to be a little... Project Mike. Yeah. from your diaphragm. <laughs> so, <laughs> my name's Kelly. I'm Hi. from Detroit, Michigan. Um, oh, from one carver to you, another. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, I was wondering if I challenged you to do something, could you challenge me back? Oh, exciting! Totally. totally. Yeah. Why don't we do it right now? We'll get the camera on you. It's okay. a good time to do it. <laughs> All um, right. Would you mind? Sorry, Willie. <laughs> you're gonna run around a lot. Uh, that's fine. <laughs> that's uh, Willie over, over there. Here. Woo. Come on over, Willie. So I was wondering if you could carve a griffin with a chainsaw. Possibly. Or would you like something a little bit more? I would love to carve a griffin. Yeah. Yeah. That's Probably awesome. some flames on the bottom or I would I did, wouldn't want to do the chainsaw one because um, the guy who designed the tattoos, Tom Chippendale, I would just feel like I was biting his style That's a little true. bit. But I would love to do a griffin in some right. form. I haven't done one yet. You should Ma make it like super intense. Maybe a yes. griffin with a blowtorch. Yes. Definitely. It'll oh, be yeah. intense. Wait, It'll be a neon and glow in the dark. Back? Yeah, what's your challenge back? <clears throat> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot. What's your name again? Kelly. Kelly. Remind me before we end to right. do that. But I got to do this. <laughs> All right. And okay. I'll think about it for a second. That sounds good. <laughs> awesome. And, Perfect. Um, Thank you. Detroit is, uh, is awesome. one of those places where I, I just hear is like, where you go. Uh, I had a roommate who was from Port Huron, Michigan. Okay. And I visited there, and it is the most cool, like, Twin Peaksy town ever okay. like it's like got like all this nightlife and it's just totally quiet and dead I but like has you. stuff to do it was amazing i didn't believe you i you know i Michigan. lived in buffalo new york for a while and traveled through the upper michigan area and at that time now this was a hundred years ago so grain of salt a <laughs> hundred years ago it was like car Before fires dinosaurs. and like Blade Runner future, it was very weird. I think, I think we're moving on. Moving we're, we're, on. We, we've expended yeah, our time with keep, this topic. Hey, let's, Max, let's... keep Allison in line, please. Yeah, okay. sorry, you guys. <laughs> That's if your Allison job. Allison becomes a problem, we <laughs> can have her removed. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> but yes, um, our next question. Hi there, my name is Becca, and I'm from Kansas. Hi, Becca. Kansas. 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 Lovely. Uh, 
And actually, I was wondering, Griffin, what your favorite carving that you yourself have done was. Ooh. You know, and this is, people ask me this, and I don't, I guess my car favorite carving is the future carving, honestly. It's the next thing. Um, but I do, I'm attached to my totem pole at the fort, partly because of all the camaraderie. Also, it took a really long time to make because I was um, getting to know my mentor at the time. And so it was sort of, I don't know, and it was early on, and it was so massive, and I would always wanted to do a totem pole, and I really want to do another, I'd like to do a bigger one, except Texas wood is so tiny. Yeah. But um, I prefer to work with large scale, so my favorites, even though they're a lot harder to get together, are the big things. Yeah. So if anybody sees a, a gigantic tree log, just, you know, pick it up. No, and just, don't. You know, <laughs> I don't need any more wood right now. And a lot of wood is it, it, full, filled with bugs and you can't carve it. So oh, yeah. Yeah. don't just bring me wood, please. <laughs> Text first. Wouldn't that be weird? That would be right? a very unexpected arrival. You can't really I, just... It's happened. This. I get logs a lot. And <laughs> You're just hanging out and somebody is dropping off like a big tree in your yard. I'd be like, uh... Well, they come by the port. And I've had people deliver logs, and at the time I didn't know better. I was like, oh, yeah, cool. And then I just had a massive log I had to get rid of somehow. Oh, so, And my friend Adam has, a lot, luckily, a lot of campfire, like bonfires in his yard. So I always end up taking wood to his house. <laughs> Have you seen those uh, folks I, who are putting in, um, like, resin and aluminum into... Yeah, it's very cool. Yeah. It would be nice to do a little more mixed media. Yeah. To do some more experimenting. Well, actually, that, it's funny that you say that, Griffin, because... You want to talk about happy actually, trees? Yeah. <laughs> Can you, can you talk a little bit about it so I can, uh, and then yeah, I'll jump yeah. in, I'll pipe yeah, in. Yeah, so Griffin is starting a new video series on her channel that is going to be uh, like just more mixed media, like more experimental, like it's, it's all about inspiration and, and uh, you know, just trying out new things. So she does all these beautiful chainsaw carvings, but there's, she's from a theater background and she's been doing a lot, all different forms like painting and sewing and that like robot sewing. Yeah. It's amazing. Oh, I got it. And I just became, a, well, I was already an aunt, but my brother and his wife just had their second baby. Aww. And so I have to do the aunt thing. I got to make some quilts. Oh. So I want to do that. Oh. Those will be some rad quilts. I can guarantee that. I, yes. Personally. Max is personal guarantee. <laughs> I actually yeah. had one more part of a question. Sure. Okay. More joking. Oop. You plan a tree for every sculpture? <laughs> um, but I have done um, some benefit shows, or one benefit show, and probably another one coming up, for uh, a replanting, like, just a tr company uh, in Bastrop because of the forest fires. They've been doing a lot of replanting out there, and so I went and carved at one of their benefit shows and donated their carving. And So, yeah, I do care about that, and that's one of the things about happy trees. I prefer to use electric for that because I do think, with the title, it's Bob Ross-inspired. It'll probably have to incorporate some ASMR, because by then I'll hopefully have a mic. Mm -hmm. And um, using electric, because it's quieter, and also just more like tree friendly, you know, and just nature friendly. And I'm gonna hopefully, I think it'd be cool to try to use sustainable materials, but I gotta do a little bit more research for that because I don't know a ton about it. But that that's the idea. That's a very good question. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, um, so, uh, just so you guys know, I was just finished up with my saw here and it's got the stock bar and it. it's like a 14 inch bar. Um, I'm going to switch to the carving bar, the 12 inch. This is like the most versatile, car if you're gonna start carving, the versatile thing you can do with this 12 inch quarter tip, quarter pitch chain, um, and you can get most of everything done with that, and then you can go a little more specialty with your little tiny baby sauce. That is a very adorable it's so sauce. Cute. It's so cute. It's an adorable, adorable and it's sauce. it's so lethal. I am still <laughs> terrified, but... It's lethal, yeah. Oh, shit. Where's this I mean, if there was a zombie apocalypse, you would Chamber. be totally sad. No, no, no. Yeah. We got three, I mean, so we're, we're safe. Yeah, yeah, we're good to yeah. go. If you all turn into zombies right now... <laughs> But I mean, I feel like if you're going to be prepared, this I'm would fucked. be the place. I'm no, sorry. no, everybody here would be survivors. I've since I was 18 years old. I'm the first one down. <laughs> I'm the one you trip <laughs> as you're running away because I will fail. You're the one friend really who like gets crafts, behind the though. door, like right as they shut the door, and they're yeah. like, no. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. But I'm good at crafts. Okay. Well, you know. So. <laughs> in a non-apocalypse world, crafts are very successful. Yeah. So, you know. Yeah. But I, who's gonna make your like? Parachute or like leg brace or your your sweater. I think they'll just raid a hospital. Anyways. Okay, yeah, you're probably good. Okay. All right, next question. All right, I'm Dustin from Houston, Texas. Yay, My Dustin. Twitter handle is dlh394 lee. I've got just two questions. I want to ask what was you think was the absolute hardest carving you've ever had to do, good and question. about question. how long did it take? Good question. Hardest carve. Hardest carving. to carve. Uh, well, you know, some of the early times, especially the first events, 
every event. I just am a nightmare. I'm not the most organized person. Um, so <laughs> what? events, events are high pressure. I'm around a bunch of carvers, which is nice because I can ask questions, but it's also like, it's not enough time. I don't want to bother them. And uh, you're also like showing off in front of each other. And so it's like pressure to like look like you know you're doing what you're doing. You know? Yeah. That's what we call a pissing contest on my planet. <laughs> It's not exactly that. Like, I mean, there's definitely some comp competition a little bit between some of the carvers, but mostly it's like personal, like a couple of different people who are like always like competing for best auction or whatever, which I'm not ever going to win. Ever. Those people suck. No, they don't suck. They're great. Uh, I mean, they're great. It's like a sport. <laughs> they're really the thing. great. The thing about it, it's like combining art with sport, I think, and performance art. Hmm. So hmm. there is like some friendly competition. Usually they're all really great shows, but those are the most stressful. I would think Australia, Australia, the competition was probably the most stressful carving that I've done because I got psyched out. Like I had a plan, I had a sketch. It was this cool sorceress, like conjuring out of a book, this like misty wolf. And it was awesome and I should have just stuck with it. I mean, I'm happy with what I did. But then um, I got there and they're like, oh, you're gonna do a female form? Ooh, this guy who's known for female forms is gonna be here, don't do that. And so I got psyched out. <laughs> and the last second I did the never ending story, but trying to come up on the fly carving while I was world. carving the biggest log I've ever carved in front of everyone. And there was a lot of, they had, a, they had done a lot of really good work at promoting it, but we had to stop a lot and do interviews. So it was just incredibly stressful. <laughs> But the never-ending story carving looks amazing. I liked it. So. And the people really were was. so attached. The great thing, they, they drove from like miles, like they saw it on the news because they did a lot of promoting. Yeah. So they drove like three or four hours to get it. And they had, they wanted to buy it for their like backyard and they had a dog named Falcor. Like they were hardcore what? fans. Of, what? So they were like, oh my God, never-ending story. And they drove all the way there. Was their child named Atreyu? That would have been cool. It should have been. I'm gonna yeah. take this down because I it's a cool kid's name. Dropped the outline. That is a really good question. Did you have more to this yeah, question? The, what was the lo how how long, how long did it take? Yeah, the how long would it take? Yeah. Okay. Well, the event was only three days. Oh yeah. So that's because the thing it too. That's if it's real timed. And for the competitions, it's usually the larger form stuff. Though they do have speed competitions, which I'm never going to enter or win. <laughs> <laughs> um, and actually, in England, I'm about to do my second competition in England at the English Open, and I'm doing the classic competition, which is another large scale, like large scale, more like uh, conceptual carving. Because I hear that I am not up to the speed carving. They told me, I'm like, no. So just go <laughs> make something pretty. Okay, did that answer your question? <laughs> Thank you, dear. Okay. <laughs> Who Thank is you, dear. next? Uh, I'm Sunny, and I'm from here in Austin. Yay! And, uh, Griffin, are you still interested in riding horses? Oh my God, yes. <laughs> I want to go all the like every time I go horseback riding. Once a year, I go for my birthday. Jeff takes me, and actually this year I've gone twice, so that's like a record. Um, and every year I'm like, I'm gonna do this all the time. I'm gonna do this year is gonna be the year, and then it's like, oh, it's my birthday again. Yeah. How did that happen? <laughs> Busyness. Have you seen the guy who rides the horse downtown in yeah. Austin? You know, he, he does that. Um, I think it was actually a local story that he, he does it now as like a protest with the flag because they tried to arrest him for drinking and then riding his horse back to his house. That is a Texas tradition. And and then it turned you out, can't. it turned out that uh, the, 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 it totally wasn't legal to totally. charge him for that because the horse is an animal. <laughs> And so now he it's just he just you know sits on his horse all day, going up and down Cesar Chavez. Austin, y'all. We're weird. Only in Austin. Okay, who is next? Yeah, my name is Hannah. I'm from Hi, San Hannah. Diego, California. Yay, Welcome. San Diego. Um, I have a question for all three of you, and then a question just for uh, Griffin. Okay. Um, for all like three it. of you, was there a specific career option that you had in mind before you went into the theater or production? Um, mine actually was pretty wow. easy. I, I got the easiest story because I was I was on Idiocracy that movie. I was an extra, and I yeah I was just I just was like in one scene, and I was like there on set, and I was like oh yeah this this is it. That's yeah. what I want to do is just like that movie be in, inspired be in the your film career. World. Yeah, no, <laughs> it, like I was a one of the shambling like drunk you know patrons just. Of course you yeah. were. How old were you then? Uh, oh, I was like 16 or oh, man. 17. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was basically like you can actually see me like a blurry me, and it's just like wow, I was so thin then. I know, I know. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, and then I was, uh, I, I just, after Idiocracy, just was like, keep it going. Okay, just okay. Kept on so, on okay. Um, what about you, Allison? Which I wanted to be either an actress or a nun. <laughs> Perfect. As a child, 
because I mean nuns get to wear that awesome like goth. You can thing. still wear it. <laughs> I could. I don't. Nobody's nope. stopping me. Uh, and then you just like you just somebody feeds you, right? You get clothed and fed and housed to read and sing all day. It sounded amazing. Um, it's looking it's looking like we went more the other direction though. <laughs> Yeah. Because, you know, boys and boobs. I should be wearing a mask right now. Yeah. Except I got too much stuff on my head. Although nobody says nuns can't do that either, so. I mean, bad nuns can. And maybe being a bad nun would be even cooler. Hey. I don't know. Third life career. Just not, wait. It's not too late. It's not, not too, too late. late. All right. What about you, Griffin? Griffin? Oh, what's the question again? Sorry. How how did you get into... Did, when, uh, was there what ever career a different you thing you considered? I did theater since middle school. And I remember even before then, like, designing the sets of, like, stories that I liked and stuff. So I think it was going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but And I don't think I'm ever going to do theater again, but I think that the things you learn with theater, how to make something out of nothing, first of all, um, how to put on a show, how to organize yourself, how to, like, have a process and get a ton of work done by a certain deadline, and yeah. working with other people, like, all of those things apply to, like... All with intensely creative cheaply. people, which are And creative people creative. are yeah. bitches. <laughs> <laughs> yes, queen. We are. Sorry. Oh, no. Sorry. Half, yeah. Um, okay. Let's take another question. Oh, wait. Did One you have something else? Yeah. yeah. Um, and then a question for Griffin. Um, okay. In San Diego, there's a lot of eucalyptus tree. I don't know if you guys have any here. Have you ever carved using it? Uh, no, I've never carved with it. I'm not sure how it would carve. Um, I usually ask the local carvers, like what they use, um, because the times that I've d done wood that was that other carvers didn't condone or whatever, I've got a giant unicorn heart in my yard right now that is like crumbling and black from on the inside, and it's just like disintegrating. And I only carved a couple years ago, so I, now I'm. But try to carve carvable woods that hold up because it's a waste of time. Otherwise, I have like sod. Yeah, you touch it. No, you have like a little. It's, you have a little like dough. You know, or it's like no. Yeah. It's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. That's just chain you. sock uh, <laughs> Yeah. So now I don't want to waste the time making something that's immediately gonna. Like I said, ephemeral is not my thing that, these days. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Next question. Hi, I'm Liana from Memphis. Hi. And I have a question for Griffin. What is it? And I just. I want to know kind of how the process of learning to do it went and like where you had to go. And well, I'm still learning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, this but is getting the process. started, you know. Um, okay, so the best thing you can do if you are interested in carving is to find another carver because they will cut down on so many tools you would have bought that you don't need and they'll just show you what you're doing like immediately. A lot of it is just the tools, right? Like, because it's not like you can go to the store and be like, give me one chainsaw carving kit, please. <laughs> if you are interested in getting a carving kit, you can go to Bailey's online and you can order a lot of the stuff there. Definitely get some chaps if you're gonna start. Yes. <laughs> Protect your important pieces. Okay. Well, and what about your uh, your, your mentor? Um... Oh yeah, so my mentor. Yeah. Actually, I really lucked out with that. Place has a really great name too. His name is R. L. Blair. Well, I have had men like me multiple mentors at this point because a lot of people have helped me out. But my first guy, R. L. Blair, it's funny because I grew up in Oregon on the Oregon coast, and I remember as a kid going to uh, this weird little independent amusement park roadside attraction on the side of the highway uh, on the coast, kind of near Walport. As a kid, it was like enchanting. Like it had all these chainsaw carvings everywhere in this whole little village, and it was like a saloon town, and they had moving pieces, like these carvings and doors would open, and it was awesome. And so that guy was R.L. Blair. He actually made that with his friend. When I was a kid, I never met him, and then when I moved here and I started carving, he was the guy who would just, it's kind of, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I went to his amusement park he made with a friend. So I had a really great carver, instructor, Really great, per funny guy, character. Didn't teach me a lot about safety, though. Taught me how to take all the th safety things off to get it out of the way. <laughs> well, you lose a finger, too. That's so just, what you, that's just what you do. When that's what you do. When I went to my first carving shows, they were all just horrified. They're like, oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. Take this. <laughs> um, so you're from the Memphis area, right? Mm -hmm. Do you know of any shows or conventions or anything in that area where maybe she could go hang out? <laughs> Do you know just like from you know memory or psychic like cool powers? Part. I forgot Gr to mark this one. Griffin. Oh, you're talking to me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Do you know of any shows or conventions in the Memphis type area? No. Uh, Google. 
I would uh, Sorry. <laughs> I would go to Facebook actually. That's where the carvers are hanging out. Oh. There used to be chainsaw carving forums and stuff, but it was mostly I think like three people that were just get belligerent <laughs> and get mad at each other and stuff. Facebook's now where people go. Um, so yeah, I would find your carver in the area. I mean you could send you can probably find it online. I think there might be some YouTube tutorials, so not a ton. But not a, car a lot of carvers doing videos. Uh, honestly, Yet. a lot of it you have to just figure out on your own. And most of the carvers kind of have to do it on their own. But talking to them, you'll get, like, shortcuts that would have taken you years to figure out. And But you've got to just be brave and kind of go for it. You know, I think. But please be safe and don't <laughs> cut any of your bits off. That we were joking earlier. <laughs> yes. Okay, did you have a question? Yeah. Um, I'm Keegan from Ohio. Hi, Dayton, Keegan. Ohio. I was just in Ohio, and it's beautiful. I was surprised. Sometimes. Uh, it's really pretty. It's all hilly, and there's Amish barns everywhere. Aww. I saw some Amish barns. Sometimes. Picturesque. <laughs> everywhere. Uh, <laughs> uh, my question is, it's kind of a two-parter. Uh, do you have any artists that you were inspired by at, like, a young age to explore your art and or styles that you like, like... Expressionism or anything like that. Realism. Oh God. Are you testing my art history knowledge? Because I am going <laughs> yes, to fail that one. must pass. <laughs> I never took any art history. Um, well, when I was a kid, honestly, I have to say totem poles, because I grew up on the Oregon coast and we would go up to Washington and stuff sometimes. Uh, totem poles were always like totally enchanting to me and like fascinating. So, uh, and I guess wood carving did stand out. My grandfather did carvings and I was always like amazed at what he could make and he would make me little like trinkets which I of course as a kid would lose or break immediately yeah but uh yeah my grandfather I guess was a source of inspiration my dad too he's an artist though he didn't really do carving he did like paintings and that kind of thing so being around my family I guess my family was my first source of like connection to art yeah cool. thank you thank you she's so pretty oh <laughs> whoa whoa so, next question. Um, I'm Jeannie from Maryland. I like that name. And um, I just wanted to ask, uh, how does it feel like when you talk to people, it's like, oh, what do you do? It's like, oh, I'm in financing. And then it's like, oh, yeah, I'm in uh, carving wood. How does that come up in conversation? <laughs> uh, well, I would probably immediately pick their brain about how to manage anything money related. <laughs> yeah. I will say. You're uh, a business person. Tell me things about yeah. business. We need them. I, yeah, actually, uh, well, people are, I will say this about carving. Other people's enthusiasm for it has helped really generate my enthusiasm for it because it is kind of exhausting and heavy. But I've never done anything that has gotten so much interest and that people have been so, like, immediately kind of excited about. So uh, there's that. And then as far as the, I don't consider what other people do boring so much because trying to manage a business, there are so many boring things that I have to do and I really need to learn how to do them better. I like so it. I can appreciate somebody who knows how to... I'm manage just something power and through. do something smart. I, I gotta focus. <laughs> All right. Also, and uh, one of the best ways to talk going. to strangers Ooh. from an extrovert <laughs> point of view is just to ask them questions about themselves. Because everybody likes to talk about themselves. That is so true. you meet some like, I am a banker. Oh, wow. <laughs> Banks, huh? So, like, the three piece suit, is that like, do they hand you those on your first day? Like, <laughs> here is your uniform. I don't Please know, get like, an appropriate hair color, Allison. As a freelancer, I don't know. I just like whenever I'm trying to talk to somebody and they're like, "Oh, like what company do you work for?" And I'm like, yeah. you know, I just like go around and like you know do different little like projects all around here and there and like yeah. oh shoot. <laughs> Who is next? Uh, first off, can I get a costume or fist bump right here? Hell yeah! Hey. Um, I'm Kristen from Los Angeles. Hi. Um, as a theater tech, uh, from one to another, uh, what's your favorite uh, production you've ever you've ever been a part of? Do you prefer like those big productions that feel like you're in a big family, or those smaller productions where you're kind of doing five different jobs yourself? Yeah. Well, I actually do like to, I kind of do like to get my hands on everything. I prefer set design to anything else. Oh, and I like I guess directing. I was had a directing background. Are you looking at me? Oh, right. That's probably from the chewing earlier. Yes. Have you not been able to hear? Have any heard? Have you guys heard any of this? No, no, no. It's good. Okay. No. <laughs> but yes, get your mic closer. All right. Um, set design is my favorite slash directing. I kind of like to just do the big picture stuff and make everything kind of cohesive. Uh, production design, I guess, production is design. great because then it's like I don't have to do all of the things. And costuming is like my least favorite. I like making <laughs> costumes like for my daughter at home or something. I do like sewing and I like designing. But actors. Oh, yeah. Not always the funnest. <laughs> I know that feeling. No. 
everybody I don't like, on I like Earth. objects. I prefer objects to people. Yeah. Go ahead with your question, dear. Sorry, my question is, which types of wood would like do you prefer wor working with and? What are the advantages of working with certain pieces of wood over other pieces of wood? Well, uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, you don't want to carve something that's just going to like rot immediately. Right. Because it's sad. So <laughs> you have had bad luck with the pine family. The loblolly pine. Uh, you know, this is white pine. White pine is awesome. I love it. Okay. In Texas, it doesn't hold, like it doesn't, it, uh, it'll crack a lot faster because it dries out super fast, you know? It's really soft, right? It's soft and it's, I like the uniformity of the color. Like I really do like the white pine and it's larger. Like I brought this back from uh, Pennsylvania. So it's like big enough to do this with. Mm -hmm. The cedar here is so red and marbled. The marble sometimes you don't want because it'll like you're doing a face and you have like a one white nose and like a red <laughs> face. It's just like, yeah. and then I have less options for varnish and that kind of thing. Yeah. But I do love cedar because it'll hold up outside. Like all my carvings that I carved, like even years ago, I have some that I've carved like early on look the same oh, okay. you know cedar's great i've worked with wet western red cedar that's the anchor in there is western red from oregon and it smells the best i would say western red is my favorite to work with yeah it's super soft smells awesome has uniform color oh <laughs> cypress in australia is great it's just oh, okay. really similar to western red cedar have you ever no carved is juniper a thing you can carve uh the juniper is related to cedar i would think so but it's so small i don't know that i would want to and i'm allergic to it oh really <laughs> Oh, I have okay. the, the pollen allergy everyone has here. Well, but it also makes me want to cut it down. There's <laughs> a, a type of juniper called an alligator juniper where the wood smells like vanilla. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah, I think that would be pretty cool because then you just like huff your sculpture. You know, just like... <laughs> I do that. Too. I mean, cedar smells great. Yeah, no. Uh, there, there's a lot of times at the fort where I'll just be like, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're awesome. That's Seen her good. do it. It's That's, creepy. No? Yeah. It's weird. It's like, yeah, kind of weird. Like, Getting, getting real oh, with the I really, there's something called incense cedar that I've heard of that I've never tried, that I really want to try because it sounds amazing. Yeah. Did yeah. that answer your question here? You have another one? I have one more quick follow-up. Okay. Um, Up a what is the biggest problem you've had, like, sculpting a sculpture? Maybe just, like, a more specific sculpture or just in general? That's a good question. What's your biggest problem that you have? You My biggest problem in general? Or obstacle that you run into. For carving? Yes. Mm. Early on, it was tools, like my tools breaking and stuff, but a lot of that has been corrected by me just learning how to take care of them better. And Jeff. My dad does I'll a lot of carving as well, so. Oh, yeah, cool. it sucks like, and the thing that sucks too, and I was talking to my friend actually, at Butler, when we were doing the carving show, another carver, and uh, I had a, one of my saws I was really counting on, it was this size, wasn't working, I couldn't get it started. Oh, wow. And I was just like, I get heart palpitations when my saw doesn't start, and I was like, <laughs> I don't know if it's from all the exertion. He's like, I think it's the stress, where it's like, Suddenly, you don't have a tool that works. Right. But yeah, I get actually heart palpitations when I start trying. If I can't start a saw right away, maybe I should have that looked at. Maybe it is a physical thing. Probably, yeah, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, thank you, though. Thank you, dear. Next question. Hi there, I am Colleen. I'm from the Portland, Oregon area. And oh, hi. My question is: uh, Once you start carving, do you, does your idea for the finished product change? Uh, yeah, depending on the wood, it, well, it can. You know, what's what's happening with the wood and. Also, you know, like, if I, sometimes I'll start with a sketch, but kind of not that often. So I'll take a bunch of different images and have to kind of find it. That's why it takes so long, usually. <laughs> I know, like, some carvers that are really fast, especially once you do the like, shows like this, they kind of practice certain things over and over and over, and they are able to block it out kind of from anything. So that was definitely a more strategic way to do this, but I kind of want to keep it an exploration process still. Yeah. Because I don't like doing things more than once, usually. Yeah, don't Even you if say it would make life easier. Don't you say that all the other carvers are, like, do, like, naturalistic, like, animals not, mostly? Not or all of them, like, but most, yeah. yeah like there are some bears. guys that are, some people that are pretty experimental and do some cool things, though. So. Oh, but yeah. they're usually not the people that are fast, either. <laughs> yeah. I like the carvers that are also slow. <laughs> Did that okay. answer your question? Thank you. Thank you, dear. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Like, and there's a lot of ways to make money at it. Like, that's the thing that's really interesting to us. So we were talking about the business stuff earlier, is meeting these other artists, especially carvers that do this thing that I do specifically, and just how many different ways they make money at it. Like, some people do the fair thing, where they just do tons and tons of fairs, and they work out a deal with the fairs where they're more, like, performance-based, and they don't make money off of the carvings, but the other day supply, the fairs supply the wood, and they take the thing away, so they have less to deal with there. Huh. And then other people will 
Do you're interested in this? Is anyone actually yeah. interested oh, in this? Yeah. No, that was, oh, yeah. that was part of the no, question. Should we take the tent to fairs uh, now, now that we've, you've got this one put together? No, I don't think I have the stamina for how much work that they do. Because they'll make like a bench and like three carvings a day. <laughs> it's amazing. Um, plus with fairs too, like you kind of are limited on what you can carve that will sell because you have to do the auction thing. And so a lot of times you're pretty stuck with doing bears and eagles or whatever you think the crowd, local crowd will want. Right. The nice thing about selling online is that any weird thing I want to carve, there's some weirdo out there that might want it, you know? <laughs> but the downside is that I have to carve small things that I can ship. And I prefer to do large scale. So it's like a mix. You got to do a little bit to sell, like inventory type things, and then a little bit of the fun things that you can actually, that'll be more promotional and kind of like cool, you know? Nice. Oh. It's falling off again, Jeff. What is going on? <laughs> this is my first time. I just modified the saw. And uh, it's my first time using the electric with the little chain like this. We've got saw drama. <laughs> it's not drama. I can use that one. It's just bulky. No, no, no. We need to hype it up. It, it, it's, oh, yeah. It's, it's getting Turn crazy. Turn it like reality. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh what is, what's God. going on? No. What is happening? I can't believe the saw! <laughs> no! Not the saw! <laughs> She's going to have heart palpitations. Was that good? Was that yeah. good? Anybody doing that a reality demo, show? They need yeah. to cast Just somebody. Just TLC. We'll, we'll do whatever. It's fine. <laughs> I can't hold down a regular job with this hair. So <laughs> throw me a bone. How many work wigs do you have, Allison? I have uh, four what I call work hair, which is different wigs that totally look like fucking wigs. I mean, I'm not fooling anybody. <laughs> I've got one that's like this giant, like, Gilligan's Island ginger, like, flipped up beehive thing. Because I feel like, come on. Just to come down. If you don't value my work, then you're getting fucking work hair. You're getting plastic hair. Uh, it's a beautiful decon. Yeah. I have I have I have a little bitterness on this subject. I, I feel like you sound like a delight to work yeah. with. <laughs> Don't I? Yeah. Well, let's uh, you know sleep on that and How then let's, many let's times have I gotten fired? We won't count here. <laughs> we're ta we're taking right. some more questions. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, it was meaning to do this later, but Allison, we have to have a talk. Oh, we do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, par for the course. She's getting rid of it. It's, for a long time, I've wanted to because I used to be really interested in puppetry go to the Czech Republic, they have like workshops you can do for like a week or two in Prague to learn how to make the traditional wooden marionettes. And oh, wow. I would love to do that now that I have more carving knowledge. Yeah. To take, to, yeah, but it would require going to Prague and, <laughs> but I'd like to do it. And then Jeff and Millie could just do fun things. Yeah. Who a would want to go to Prague? Camp. I'd go, a marionette camp, yeah. They have lovely architecture. Done. That's a thing grown ups do, right? Yeah, yeah. It's the future. Did that answer your question, dear? <laughs> Okay, great. Yes, ma'am. Wait, there you go. Get it down there. Uh, hello, I'm Melissa from Sydney, Australia. Oh, hello. Yay. Yay. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if it's a bit surreal for you to go overseas and take your work overseas and think, wow, this is something I get to do all over the world. Yeah, it's just, it's definitely one of the, the main perks of carving is that it is so much travel in it. And that's one thing that a lot of the carvers have in common. They're very different people from all different backgrounds who kind of got into it from different ways. Some from the lumber industry, some from art, some just because their friend had a chainsaw and dared them to do it or whatever. The one thing that they, most of them have in common is the travel bug. Yeah. And it's cool to, I love traveling with purpose more than like t tourism. I don't know, it feels different when you know you're supposed to be there for something. Okay. I kind of like it, I don't know. I feel like you get more connected to the place. Yeah. I mean, maybe you don't, but maybe it's just like, having something to do and not yeah. just being kind of like a slob on vacation. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think you're wrong. I think being a slob on vacation <laughs> is awesome. You're a hundred percent. There's a time and a place. How yeah. is everybody doing? Are you enjoying the show? Woo! This is pretty cool, huh? It is. Are there I any more questions or is everyone Oh no, shy? we got more questions. We got more questions. We're just blabbering on. Yeah. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. <laughs> Hi, I'm Abby from Liverpool, and I was just wondering how long does it take you to plan your sculptures before you actually make them? It really depends on what I'm making and how much planning I have to do. And if, so sometimes the best stuff is like the freestyle stuff. Oh, one of my favorite carvings, I forgot about it, but to answer the question from earlier, one of my favorite carvings I ever did was Tantrum. I don't know if, you, if any of you have followed my work for a few years, oh, but it was yeah. this real skinny, like, girl and she was like this and her hair was like in a big flume above her head and I was just in a <laughs> pissy mood and I went out there and I had this thing and I was just like and then I had this like a little tantrum and that's why I named it that 
But it was so fun because it was just like I didn't think about it, I didn't plan it, and I, I usually do plan, especially for the videos, I have to. So it's kind of nice when those little moments of like immediate inspiration happen. And as artists who are trying to consistently work, you, it is not, the magic doesn't always happen, so you have to find ways to continue to work without Spark the magic it. sometimes. Yeah. Um, so it's nice when the magic does happen, even if it's inspired by anger. <laughs> Hi, I'm Kara. I'm from West Virginia. Hi. Hi. Oh, yeah, I saw you at the booth earlier. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering how difficult was it whenever you first started out? Because I don't know, like, how heavy the saws are or anything, but, like, I have little to no upper body strength. Yeah. And I figured that that could be a problem. It took me, a, if, when I first started, it took me um, a while to develop the stamina to carve for more than an hour or two at a time, especially when it's hot out. It does take a while, um, especially because early on I had bulkier saws. Yeah. I've gotten lighter saws. Um, here, let me put the scabbard on this and you can hold it. And what? See what you think. This, uh, <laughs> this is really, really light. Well, this electric too, so it doesn't have to have a gas tank. Um, super light. This is actually in a bigger saw. This is for make, making the bigger cuts. They get lighter, or they can get lighter from there. So these are about the same weight, the electric. I have noodle arms. Actually, I feel you. The electric like, may, <laughs> potentially electric could weigh more with all the wiring and stuff. Maybe so. I don't know. Yeah, but, it would uh, be well for carving me Carving saws, you can, like, the carving saws, the things that will fit, that you don't have to buy, like, a whole new clutch drum for, tend to be um, around the seven to eight pound. And that's something I really like steel for, because I originally started, I had bought Echoes. And uh, nothing against Echo, except they stopped making the saw that was my carving saw. When it broke down, I couldn't replace it. And then um, they, they were all too heavy. And they had one that was like heavier than what I was used to, but I was willing to try it. And then I got it, and I wasn't able to convert it to a carving kit, so I had to send it back. And when I, I originally talked to Steel, I was just tweeting to everyone, to so Steel, Husqvarna, and Echo, to see if anyone had a lightweight saw, rear-handled. If you do start carving, do rear handle, don't do the top handle arbor saw, because you can steer that. Um, and the only one to respond to me was steel, and they had the perfect saw. And they sent it, and it was and it was just love at first sight. So how was your experience today, Griffin, in doing this live car event? What do you think about this? Man, I was really nervous leading up, because it's not a lot of time. And like I said, I'm not the fastest person in the world. Um, but I'm feeling really positive. And thank you guys so much for coming. I was really blown away by how many people showed up and the fact that you're still standing on the hard surface, hanging out patiently. Imagine doing it in heels. We all feel I you. can <laughs> imagine doing it in heels. Yeah. Somebody made the awesome decision to bring a microphone to the booth. Yeah. Yeah. And I am a disaster on the mic. Oh, yeah. I, I'm literally a disaster. It's not, that wasn't like a cool no, like, like, <laughs> hip hop thing to say. That I, was like, like there's I There's something about it. you saying hip hop makes this just sound so it's, cool. It's, yeah. it's so, <laughs> don't I just, I just exude. You, you exude hip hop. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's not true. Um, <laughs> I wonder if Gorilla Glue catch on fire. Should we do a test? Oh no, wait, wait it bubbles. It boils. Okay. It smells a little like fireworks. It might be... Uh, good fumes, good fumes. Yeah, I was about to say. <laughs> oh, I guess we'll find out. All right, I'm almost done. Let me just burn this okay. tag, and then we're all official. OMG. That is a really cool thing. Would you like to explain that? Because that's always really fascinating to me. This is map gas. Okay, so those of you who want some portable fire... Uh, I used to use the propane torches, but map gas burns a lot hotter. And you want it to burn as hot as possible because it'll burn the closest on the, out, the outside surface right. before it burns the cracks. And so, by the, and if you usually use it to create shadows, so you want it in the cracks more. The best thing is like a welding torch, but we don't all have that. So this is a great portable, inexpensive thing if you want to burn something really hot. Like, yeah. So then uh, just trying to get into the cracks. And then a lot of times I'll flap sand to create like highlights, except right now I just want it to look blackish. So, and I'm gonna seal it with, uh, I've got some wood sealer, I'm gonna spray it with a clear lacquer satin finish, that's my plan. But I'll do that after everything's all dry and after I've tweaked it a little bit. All right, did anybody else have a question? Real quick, probably your last yeah. opportunity to ask a question Ever. during the- Ever. 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 Griffin will not talk for the entire yeah. rest of the convention. She will just sit there silently. I'm gonna be eating donuts. <laughs> That's not my plan. Okay, hi, um, I'm Dominic Whitaker. I'm from New hi. Smyrna Beach, Florida. Welcome. And uh, going to school for art, uh, what advice would you give anyone who's looking to make like art or design their professional field? One uh, thing is... Learn to code. <laughs> <laughs> one thing, uh, 
one thing that I really wish college would have prepared me for is the business side of it. And knowing how to give an accurate quote and then knowing how to do invoices and learning to not procrastinate on that because you do all the work and then that's the thing I always just don't send invoice. It seems, I don't want to send it. And it's the one thing that is so easy to do and that's where the money comes from, you know? So all of those things and like just the accounting side, like it sounds boring. The marketing side, all of that stuff that you don't think about when you're doing your fancy art degree or fancy theater degree that you're guaranteed if you're going to do it professionally, you're kind of a freelancer so you have to know how to run a business. So I would say definitely learn and get as much as you can out of the process and all of the history and all of the techniques and that's super important because you're going to be using it. But don't forget to pick everyone's brain that you can about the business side of thing. And unfortunately, I don't know that a lot of professors have that experience because they just... Academia. They just, yeah, they, they teach. Yeah. Right. Same it's with, like, all like conceptual. Yeah. Yeah. Great to have people doing that, but uh, if you actually are going to try to run a business later. Maybe do like a community college business class too if you want to just tack it on, you know? Okay. Uh, let me add a little tag, and then, like I said, I'll do a little bit of cleaning up later, but nobody has time for that. What do you guys think? <laughs> Pretty cool. Wait, and they have to do that. You put them on the spot. I'm always <laughs> impressed. I'm always impressed. Where should I put the tag? The back? Back. Right yeah. here in the middle? Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Where's my drill? I just lost it, and my screws. How about RTX in general this year? Everybody <laughs> having fun with that? Really pump people up. It's my job as an yeah, MC yeah. is to get people interested, Max. Yeah. Uh, nobody cares what I think. Like, yeah. I'm just here to razzle dazzle. We gotta. Just woo! I, I care yeah. what you think. You guys wanna, you guys wanna do it again just because like we're doing it? One woo! more, yay! All right. Hey, hey. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, done. Excellent. Excellent. Amazing done. artist. Woo! Woo! And now we can have a cocktail. <laughs>